Hi, welcome again. I'm sorry about the bad audio quality. This is the best I can do in the available circumstances. We k- kind of finished off the class at a very abrupt note where we completed a simple trivial example. We created an observable and subscribed to it. Um and we saw how to listen to an observable, but I'd like to back up a little bit and kind of talk about the relationship between i enumerable and i observable. We discussed that i enumerable and i observable are really cousins in that both of them are sequences. The i enumerable is a pull based sequence where you call it and you pull it to get values whereas the i observable pops values at you after you've subscribed to it. And both of these can be queried using link style operators. In fact, both of these as Eric Meyer the creator of Rx discovered, they represent two distinct commonly popular design patterns i enumerable represents the iterator design pattern and i observable represents the observer design pattern and while the gang of four book doesn't represent any relationship between these two eric meyer and his team discovered that they are really duals of each other duality is a philosophical concept everything in nature exists in duality male is the dual of female form is the dual of formlessness So duality is basically you standing in a mirror your literally inverted image is the dual of your real image in mathematics mathematics borrows this concept of duality and applies it to functions uh, mathematically duality simply means transposed opposites let me explain that there are two kinds of opposites in maths one is the inverse of a function and the second is the dual of a function inverse simply means if there's a function that goes from x to x upon 2 which is it halves the value that's a func from int to double then the inverse of the function would be any function that undoes what this does so a function that double the value would be the inverse so if you supplied 10 as the argument to the first original function you'd get back 5 if you took that 5 and supplied it to the inverse function you'd get back 10 which is the original value the inverse concerns itself with the internal implementation of a function how it's done so that it can reverse it however duality doesn't concern itself with the details of implementation duality is a concept of category theory which is concerned only with interfaces you look at the interface of a component and see what's the argument it takes what's the type of return that it gives and you transpose those two so the dual of a function called get price that takes an integer and returns a double would be a func that takes a double and returns an integer it would be set price it takes a double returns an integer you'll notice two things about it one in transposing the dual we did not concern ourselves with the implementation of how get price is implemented we just looked at the interface we moved things around a bit and we got the dual it's as easy as that second thing you'll notice is the set price doesn't undo what get price does it's basically a complement or a dual or the literally inverted mirror image of get price it's the cousin the brother from another mother uh, again uh, in the business context this is not how set price would really be relevant uh, in a in a proper application probably set price would need the item id as well whose price you want to set but the concept here being discussed is duality these two are perfect duals of each other so enumerable and observable as eric meyer discovered are really duals of each other and so he derived the i observable interfaces definition and the i observer definition simply by transposing the definitions of i enumerator and i enumerable we look at how that is done but i will remind you if you remember any linear programming if you've done in, in college in mathematics uh, you know what duality is because you, there was a dual method of solving optimization problems where you could transpose constraints from a maximization problem and create a minimization problem and solve that um, uh, enough of that let's look at the code to see how i observable was derived uh, simply by dualizing i enumerable okay here i have two interfaces both the interfaces uh their stubs we will create i observable and i observer we will derive them by looking at i the definition of i enumerable and i enumerator we know that i enumerable returns has a simple method called get enumerator which returns i enumerator of t i enumerator has these three methods move next current and reset reset was really a mistake so we'll skip that for now and 
it implements disposable, which I haven't written, so it's got a dispose method. Let's dualize them simply blindly without thinking. So, okay, before we actually dualize, uh, this is the I enumerable, which is the passive sequence, which should be iterated over. Similarly, in the dual world, this is the observable, which is the passive sequence, which can raise notifications and somebody will be interested in this. Similarly, this is the I enumerator, the real doer, which knows how to iterate over this. Likewise, this is the observer in the dual world, the actual doer who is active and interested in the observable. So, uh, I will name things appropriately. If you were to dualize this, you would get a function that took uh, some kind of a doer and returned void. So, in this case, the doer would be observer. So, I'd have a function called set observer, which took an I observer of t and returned void. In fact, this is the subscribe method. So this is exactly what subscribe does. Let's call it subscribe. Similarly, if you move over to the iterator, we have basically these two functions are one atomic unit. What they're doing is they're getting you a value. So consider them as one atomic unit. Uh, however, this function move next is kind of overloaded. Or in fact, if you look at both of them together as a single atomic unit, they're basically overloaded with responsibility because they can do three, one of three things. Move next could actually give you a bool, which could give you a true value saying, yes, there is something. Or it could give you a false value saying there's nothing else, the sequence has been completed, or it could raise an exception. This is actually what move next is capable of returning. Uh, and along with current, if you treat that as, a, uh, that as a single unit, it would basically mean that move next would either give you a T or it would give you void saying the sequence is complete or it would give you an exception. Let's rewrite that as three functions. So we have a move next that returns a t, which, is, which signifies uh, get the next value. We have a move next that throws an exception. Obviously, all of this is illegal C sharp code only for demonstration purposes. And I have to admit to you um, that. All of this is really purely pedantic academia of no practical relevance, but I thought it would be interesting to cover any, anyway for the sake of completeness and symmetry because all over the place, if you search for Rx, you, you'd see this everywhere. And it's kind of interesting to know. This one signals completion and this one signals error. Now, if you were to dualize each of these three methods, the first one, which gets you the value, would take a t and return void. And obviously, this would not, this would notify the observer that it has a value. So let's call this on next, meaning that you have a value or let's say we have a value have a value. Similarly, this function would take, the dual of this method would take an exception and would return void and you could call this on error. Basically this is a way for the observable to signal to the observer that we have an error. Something bad happened. And the third one would take nothing and would signal completion and would return nothing. And this would signal completion. If you look at the definition of iObserver in the .NET framework, that's exactly how it looks. Now, there's one important bit left. Every time you subscribe, there, is an, there has to be a way for the client code to unsubscribe that subscriber. So, in effect, you need another method here called unsubscribe for the purposes of symmetry, but this was a bad idea Microsoft realized, and so they didn't have this method. Uh, the reason is, if you look at the classic observer design pattern, it's actually event-based and not interface-based. This is an interface-based implementation. If you look at an event-based implementation of an observer, it really looks like this. You have a subscribe method that takes an action of these, 
and an unsubscribe method that also takes this, the same action of T as it's supposed to take, and it's basically supposed to attach or detach that action from an internal private event. Now, if a client code were to use this model, this observable numbers implementation, it would look like this. You create an instance of the observable numbers class, you subscribe to it, providing a lambda, you unsubscribe to it, providing the same lambda. However, this would cause a memory leak because we know in .NET, lambdas or delegates are immutable. So this delegate is really a different object from this delegate. And so the references wouldn't match. And so this method is really not doing anything. It's not, it can't unsubscribe this because this was never subscribed to with. Uh, of course, this can be mitigated if the client code did something like this. and supply this action, but that would be too much of responsibility to be shifted to the users or developers who are using your library. And that's a bad thing. So the .NET Framework guys decided not to have an unsubscribe method. Instead, what they did was remove this method and returned an I disposable so that the client code could simply dispose the subscription when they didn't need it any longer. This works out well because iDisposable is a pretty old interface baked into the .NET framework. Everybody's familiar with it. There's language support, the using statement in C Sharp, uh, and um, that's a win-win for everyone. Now, if you look at the interface definitions for iObservable and iObserver, they're exactly these. Uh, so this is the process through which the interfaces were derived. And so this kind of proves that duality uh, is a pretty important principle of mathematics that helps us solve real-world problems.